Over the course of the 14 or so years that I played on the tour, I ended up playing with a lot of different partners. Um, I think 25 in the last four years was, was, the, uh, was the rough count. Uh, over the course of 14 years, you know, you, you, you do the math. Uh, in any event, uh, I was lucky. I had a lot of really good partners, quality guys uh, that I really enjoyed playing with. Um, and, and I tried to find people who complemented what I did. So I uh, served uh, pretty well, and I, I, I volleyed pretty well. I, I took up a lot of net. I moved pretty well at the net. I was able to help my partner out, and I found partners uh, that would complement that. I had a lot of great, uh, great returning partners and um, guys who played break, break points pretty well. Uh, so in that, I was fortunate. But the one thing that I thought that I did uh, really well was to communicate with my partner and manage the on-court situation so that our team could play m most effectively more often. So I really thought that how I, how I behaved, how I conducted myself, how I managed the situation really had an impact on how my partner played. And that's from the warm-up, you know, before we ever got onto the match court, getting prepared, trying to get relaxed, trying to get focused, uh, trying to get organized, etc. And then to the match court, where I tried to be aware of the, the match situation, what was going on with me, what was going on with our opponents, and you know what was going on with my partner. And I think this allowed me to know, you know when to say what, when to boost energy if, if that was necessary, when to try to calm a situation, when to intervene, um, when to back off. And gosh, you know those, those times when my partners got on rolls and were playing incredible, it, it allowed me to know, you know when to shut my mouth and get out of the way. So I think all I'm really simply describing is, is uh, how to support your partner and how to create good team chemistry. So I think there are two fundamental aspects of creating uh, good team chemistry. I think the first one is communication and the second one is awareness. And I think that those two are not independent of one another. They have to work together in order to, uh, to really you know, get the whole thing right. So communication involves both the broadcasting and the receiving. And I think that as far as you know, determining what you're broadcasting, there's four pretty simple uh, rules of thumb. One, is it true? Two, is it kind or is it positive in the case of, of the doubles partner? Uh, three, is it necessary? And four, is the timing right? So let's drill into those a bit. If you're broadcasting BS, people are going to pick up on it right away, especially a doubles partner. You lose your doubles partner's trust, team chemistry out the window. So what you're saying has to be true. The next thing is, is, is it kind or in this case, does it skew positive? There's no doubt that some people respond to negative uh, feedback, and, and, and a kind of harsh um, communication, but I don't think it's real healthy over the long run. I think over the long run, you actually are, are shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, I think that over the long run, you have, to, uh, you have to skew positive, frame things more positive than negative. I think that's because of the, the way the human brain has evolved. We, internalize, we sort of absorb and internalize uh, negative stuff a lot easier. We remember that more. Uh, skewing positive um, sort of offsets that negative bias and I think is really important over the long run health of any relationship, particularly a doubles partnership. So I remember in cases where my partner would play a good point on, on their return, but we would lose it, I'd always say something like, hey, no problem, way to make them work. If they'd miss a, good, uh, miss a return but hit it well, say, hey, no problem, great rip. Skewing positive, always the way to go. Not fake. But you know, it's got to be realistic. People will see through that. But just make sure that you're skewing positive. That'll pay off. Second thing about being positive is we all know that body language affects us. So we want to make sure that we're aware of our body language. But also it affects our partner. And we can drag the whole team and the team chemistry right down uh, if we don't pay attention to that. The third thing to consider is, is this necessary? Is what I'm about to broadcast really necessary? And is it furthering our cause? Great question to ask yourself, actually. And if you can do this off the court and on the court, and uses goes by the acronym WAIT, W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? I used to catch myself all the time, either through 
you know, maybe I, I, I was nervous and I just wanted to take up some space, but just uh, putting some stuff out there, you know, because it was my own deal and not really because it was something that my partner needed to hear and, and, and it wasn't something that was going to further our cause and push the ball down the field. So just check in with yourself. What's my intention? Why am I broadcasting this? And, you know, so you may notice that you're talking a little bit less, but that's okay. And the fourth thing to consider is whether or not the timing is right. I had a partner a long time ago when I was much younger, and I would turn to him and I would say, come on, first serve in. And so consider that, that statement or that, uh, that broadcast. Uh, was it true? Well, there was nothing about it that was, that, was, that was not true. It wasn't false, so that was okay. Uh, was it kind? Did it, did it skew positive? Yeah, it did. I was, I was telling him what to do. Uh, or suggesting to him what to do as opposed to telling him what, what not to do. Uh, so it satisfied that, the, that second uh, rule of thumb. Uh, the third thing was, you know, was it necessary? Did it, did it move further our, our, uh, our, our effort? And yeah, it did. Higher first serve percentage, more likely to win points and hold serve. The problem was that I was doing this. I was, give, I was broadcasting right after he missed a, uh, a first serve. So I was getting the timing horribly wrong. I mean, he would literally hit a serve in the net, I would turn around, and maybe it was because of my nerves, anxiety, I don't know, maybe I was a little irritated that we were gonna now have to hit a second serve on a big point, and I would say, come on, first serve. It was, you know, terribly unaware, and it was not doing anything to help my partner play better. So fortunately, my partner, communicated directly, confronted me, say, hey, you, you can't do that. It's, it's, it's freaking me out, understandably so. I was able to then become a little bit aware of what was going on internally, why I was saying that, s stop that behavior, and then you know, react to, to, to missed uh, first serves and, and other things in a much more um, uh, skillful manner and do the things that help my partner actually play well. But those, uh, in terms of how you're broadcasting, those are four fundamental things. Uh, pay attention to them. Is it true? Uh, is it kind? Does it slash? Does it skew positive? Uh, is it necessary? Does it help our team uh, move forward? And is the timing right? Get those things right and you'll be in business. And the other part of communication that's super duper important is listening. Just notice if when your partner is talking, if you're actually listening, if you're really right there, or if you're already planning what you're gonna say in return. That's a great communication tool in general, but it's really important on the, on the court because you want your partner to feel like you're there listening on the same page and that you're, that you're on the team, right? That you're working together. And that, that listening piece is really crucial to sending that message. In addition to good communication, being really aware is the other key ingredient to building good chemistry on the tennis court. And the best way that I know how to build awareness is simply to practice it. So just to go on the court, practice being aware of what's going on with you, what's going on with your partner, what the score is, what's going on with the opponents, and all of that awareness will start to give you the feel for how to manage the situation depending on what it looks like at any given moment. Partner gets angry, maybe you know to back off, give them some space. Uh, partner's getting a little frustrated, you know you know to step in there, give them a little encouragement. Partner misses a great return, is struggling on the return, but say, hey, no problem, great rip, don't worry about it, I'll, uh, I'll get you another couple of chances, try to take a little bit of the pressure off. Maybe your partner's starting to get angry, you inject a little bit of humor, and sometimes in those, those awesome moments when somebody gets on a roll, your partner gets on a roll, you'll know to sit back, keep quiet, and enjoy the ride. So I mentioned it's all about communication and awareness. And if you can get in front of this a little bit and have a, a conversation with your partner, it'll go a long way towards building this team chemistry. So deal, communicate directly. You know, uh, have a conversation. Ask what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. A ask them what you should do and tell them what they should do uh, when, when, you know, when there's some anger or some frustration uh, or something like that going on. I had a partner uh, once who um, 
who did not like it when I would joke around with our opponents during the uh, the, the coin flip. And, uh, you know, he had his game face on, he was ready to go, and that kind of um, just joking around and, and, and being kind of carefree uh, made him, for some reason, very, very tense. Hey, no problem. He and I were in this thing together, and, um, and, I, uh, and I stopped that and uh, got him comfortable. But he had to tell me that for me to know that uh, in that particular case. And, uh, and then I could be, you know, he, he communicated, I could become aware, and, uh, and then we could, you know, keep, keep going, building team chemistry and moving the ball down the field. Experiencing the teamwork and coordination that comes with a successful doubles partnership is awesome. Some of my best memories from the tour, in fact, are from those moments when I was in the trenches with a partner, fighting, uh, getting on the same page, communicating, overcoming adversity together. And so getting the chemistry right is crucial to any of that success, right? It, it has to come. Sometimes it's there immediately and naturally, and other times it takes a little bit of work, but it's got to be there in order for there to be success in any partnership, but particularly with a doubles partnership on the tennis court. And it's absolutely clear to me that uh, the, getting the communication piece and the awareness piece is fundamental. Work on those two things and you'll be in business and your doubles partnerships are going to be a lot better.